Right, I want to do another talk, ladies and gentlemen. And I want to show you that in Scripture, the Bible teaches us about the importance of the leaders looking after the congregation. Now, remember the examples that I talked about over there. The example of the persecution of France that's going on over there and the silence of our bishops. I want to show to you the biblical case of why they are in judgment for their failure as leaders, according to the scriptures. And I want to use the example of what's happening in Lebanon. In Lebanon, Lebanon is a failed state at the moment. It's a failed state. They've got, they got two different clocks going on at the moment. The Muslims say it's one, it, it's, it's one hour behind the, what the Christians are saying. Their, their, their state authorities are offering out two time zones across the entire country. And if you're a Christian, it's 10 o'clock. And if you're a Muslim, it's 9 o'clock because it's a failed state. Now, ladies and gentlemen, the, the Lebanese state has failed to look after all of its citizens, all of them. Muslim, Druze, Christian, none of them are being looked after by the Lebanese state. So I want to send a message to the Lebanese Christians, but I also want to try and educate you, ladies and gentlemen, about what the scriptures teach. So listen to what it says. In Luke 14, 28 to 30, it, Christ says this in a parable. For which of you desiring to build a tower does not first sit down and count the cost whether he has enough to complete it. Otherwise, when he has laid a foundation and is not able to finish, all who see it begin to mock him, saying, this man began to build and was not able to finish. The Christian faith teaches Christians that before you do something, you plan and you prepare. So planning and preparing is a fundamental Christian practice. It's a human practice. Jesus didn't teach this because he was giving new revelation. He's giving this because if you don't do it, you're not earthly wise. So if your society is incapable of looking after you, then as Christians, what should you do? You should organize and plan to look after yourselves. It goes on. In Acts 20, 28, pay careful attention to yourselves and to all the flock in which the Holy Spirit has made you overseers to care for the church of God when he obtained that he which he obtained with his own blood. So the book of Acts is saying that the overseers are commissioned to care for Christians. It's there in black and white that the bishops should be there to look after the congregation of the church. So when the Christians of Lebanon are faced with a dysfunctional state in which the infrastructure doesn't work, and that there is garbage piling up on the streets and where the hospitals don't work because they're totally flooded and underfunded and where the police don't work and the army doesn't work. What does the Bible say to the bishops in that situation? It says, pay, pay careful attention to yourselves and to all the flock in which the Holy Spirit has made you overseer to care for the church. So the bishops of Lebanon need to organize the Christians of Lebanon to provide their own police force, their own hospitals, their own schools, organize the collection of their own taxes to support Christian institutions in Lebanon to look after the Christian community, to organize 
the Christians of Lebanon so that they can guarantee their own economic, social, political and security affairs. It says in Proverbs, Know well the condition of your flocks and give attention to your herds. What kind of shepherd allows his sheep to be beset by wolves? or to be left out in the cold, or to be untrimmed in the summer, or unfed, or unwatered. What kind of shepherd abandons his flock in the hour of need? No, shepherds defend their flocks from wolves. They look after the needs of their sheep. Well, you bishops of Lebanon, must organize yourselves so that the Christians of Lebanon are protected. It goes on. They ministered with song before the tabernacle of the tent of meeting until Solomon built the house of the Lord in Jerusalem and they performed their service according to their order. 1 Chronicles 6.32 When the community of Israel needed something, the leaders organized to provide it. Where the state is failing the people, that is an opportunity for the church to step up. There are Christians in South Africa suffering because the state is a failed state. There are Christians in Nigeria suffering because the state is a failed state. There are Christians in Lebanon failing because the state is a failed state. We as Christians need better leaders who take the word of God seriously. 1 Timothy 3, 2 states, Therefore an overseer must be above reproach, the husband of one wife, sober-minded, self-controlled, respectable, hospitable and able to teach. Protestants focus on the teaching. But that is not the only responsibility of a pastor. A pastor is one who organizes his community so that their needs are met. What are the needs of the English church? The needs of the English church are proper political representation. The needs of the English church are the creation of families. The needs of the English church is proper education of our priests. The need of the English church is to embolden the believer. The need of the English church is to instill a Christ-like identity in the follower of Christ. The need of the English church is to establish security for the Christian. And what are our bishops worrying about? <laughs> Creating nice liturgies for transgender people. <laughs> Blessing homosexual couples in certain circumstances. These are not leaders. The Bible is describing a leader. The one that organizes his people to meet their needs. I'll finish with this before taking questions. Ecclesiastes 3 verses 1 to 8. For everything there is a season and a time for every matter under heaven, a time to be born and a time to die, a time to plant and a time to pluck up what is planted, a time to kill and a time to heal, a time to break down and a time to build up, a time to weep and a time to laugh, a time to mourn and a time to dance, a time to cast away stones and a time to gather stones together a time to embrace and a time to refrain from embracing. Christian leaders, the time of just being teachers and not real political leaders for the Christian community is over. Christendom has fallen and what we must do is organize ourselves to establish a new Christendom. And that means that we must reorganize the Christian community across continents so that it can meet the challenges that it truly faces. 
and those challenges do not include being acceptable to the progressive militants and their degeneracy in divorce, abortion, transgender and LGBTQ silent P ideology that they're pushing on our children or kowtowing to Islamists or bending the knee to a political cult of multiculturalism. Christianity is the answer to the cancer of liberalism and the cancer of Islam. Any questions? Any questions on the topic? Ladies first. So, so how can we do that? Yeah. To repeat the answer that I gave you before, sister. We must take responsibility for ourselves and organize at the grassroots level. How? By moving closer to one another so that it doesn't take you an hour to meet with another like-minded Christian and then you spend two hours traveling there and back before you can do anything. Move closer to one another so it's a 15-minute walk. And then when you're closer to one another, you can better pool your resources, you can better pool your energies, you can better pool your agendas and ambitions. And it may just be that when the Christian leaders see that these bunch of laity Christians organize themselves effectively, that they learn from us what it means to be an effective Christian community. So organize at the grassroots level. Don't wait for the incompetent bishops. Next question. Go on, bro. What would you say to Muslims who think that theirs is the one that's being oppressed? Okay. What would I say to Muslims who think that Islam is being oppressed? Specifically. Specifically. I will answer that question specifically. It is a lie. It is a lie that you tell yourselves and it is a lie you tell other people. Yes. Across the entire Islamic world, yes. Christians are persecuted without exception. Yes. There are anti-Christian pogroms in Egypt, churches bombed in Pakistan, yes. churches refused to be opened in Indonesia, churches being ethnically cleansed in Nigeria. 